Hey, Ringgold United Methodist Church, this is Bobby here. Welcome to online traditional worship here on March the 15th. As we get going in traditional worship, will you join me in an opening prayer together? Almighty and everlasting God, who can banish all affliction, both of soul and of body, show forth your power upon those in need, that by your mercy they may be restored to serve you afresh in holiness of living. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood oh to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love here's my heart oh take and seal it seal it for thy courts above Hi, I'm Chris Bryant, the senior pastor here at Ringgold United Methodist Church, and we're going to pause right here in worship uh, to give you a chance to consider your offering this week. Now, without you being here in attendance, we're going to encourage you to give online. Uh, right now at Ringgold United Methodist Church, anywhere between 10 to 20% of folks any given month give online. I'm an online giver. It's the first draft that comes out of my bank account every month. Uh, this might be an opportunity for you to try online giving for the first time. Uh, maybe you'll find that it's helpful to you. Uh, and so we encourage you to do that right now. If you don't want to do that or are unsure about it, of course, you can always mail in your offering uh, or your tithe. Uh, we'd be very much uh, thankful to receive that. Uh, this year, in 2020, we started off at Ringgold United Methodist Church really, really great as far as our financial income. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, January is the best month, rather, I've ever had as a pastor uh, in any church I've ever served. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. And then in February, uh, with the weather being like it was and a number of folks uh, uh, on various trips, and uh, you know, attendance took a little bit of a dip, and so did our finances. It was actually probably the lowest uh, month uh, of any that I've been here in a past uh, uh, since your pa being your pastor. And and then we got back into March, and the first Sunday of March was excellent, and, and then last Sunday was really great as well. And so we were thinking things were going to balance out, and, and it's going to be just fine. And of course, now we're dealing uh, with having to do online worship this week, next week. Uh, and, and so we really want to make sure that you're aware of uh, where we are as a church. And thank you uh, for giving and for taking the extra time uh, to either mail that check in or go ahead and give online so that the church stays as healthy as it can, financially speaking, uh, even though we're not able to offer worship this week, uh, we still have staff to pay, we still have bills to pay. You guys know this, of course. I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, give online right now or here shortly or mail in your tithe or your offering soon. Let's have a prayer. Lord, bless this giving of our tithes and our offerings to you. Take it and do with it as you please. We give it back to you, acknowledging that you own everything. And we worship you through this act. Thank you, God. We trust you with our whole lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you join me now for a time of focused prayer? 
We are people who journey as vessels containing wellsprings of hope, sharing, replacing, and adding new waters of proclamation, power, prophecy, and prayer to the containers of our life and faith. We pause and reflect on the movement of the tide in this journey as it washes upon our shores, cleansing and calling us back to ministry and faith. O Creator God, let the waters of your womb heal. Let us pray for our global community. O Creator God, let the waters of your womb heal. Let us pray for the bent overness of our lives and world. O Creator God, let the waters of your womb heal. Let us pray for those living in the midst of illness. O Creator God, let the waters of your womb heal. Let us pray for those living in poverty. O Creator God, let the waters of your womb heal. Let us pray for the effort of peace. O Creator God, let the waters of your womb heal. Let us pray to trust the validity of our experience. O Creator God, let the waters of your womb heal. Let us pray for the call within by the one who creates in us wellsprings of hope. O Creator God, let the waters of your womb heal. O Creator God, may the waters that covered us at our birth once again remind us of our creation in you. Remind us that we are vessels of the waters of hope and that your outpourings have power to heal and make whole our bruised world. Let the living waters of creation, womb, baptism, and spirit encircle us that we may remember we are yours and be thankful. Now join me as we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
good morning, uh, sisters and brothers, or whenever it is that you happen to be watching, um, watching this online. I am so grateful that you've chosen to worship with us uh, in this capacity, in this very, uh, very unprecedented weekend uh, of worship. Um, you know, some folks have, um, have been concerned that it was about fear, uh, that uh, we were afraid to worship, or uh, what is this saying? What is this saying to others? And and the truth is, uh, my, my thoughts are, sisters and brothers, that if we had worship, there would be plenty of people that would come because uh, my sense is that most of you are not afraid. Um, you are great people of faith and, and you have trust in God. And, uh, but the thing is, part of our faith is not just about courage or, or believing that God can do anything that God wants to do, uh, but God also calls us to be wisdom and uh, to have wisdom. And so, uh, friends, you know, I have no doubt that there would be people here uh, and in the future, uh, but the question is not do we have faith or, or is it fear, but is it the wise thing to do? And I believe it was, in fact, the wise thing to do as we uh, do our duty, uh, be part of the solution in mitigating uh, the spread of this virus. Now, that said, I want to share a, a word with you today, and, and as I begin, I, I want to uh, begin with a very, very quick word of prayer. Uh, and, and I want you to be thinking about people that you might want to be praying for. Um, right now in our own congregation, there are a number of f- folks that are facing um, a very, very serious sickness. And uh, we, we may even have some folks on the edge that, that, are, that are nearing their, their end. And um, so we, we need to be mindful of those folks, whether that is, uh, has something to do with you know, this, this virus or not doesn't really matter. In, in this time, let's be prayerful for them. Let's be prayerful for those folks that are going to be affected by the downturn in the economy. Um, we're, we're, let's be thinking about the folks that have to choose it this next week, um, whether they go to work or whether they watch the kids and what to do there and the struggle they have. Do they earn money to take care of the kids or uh, do they, have, you know, choose to spend, you know, to stay home with the kids? And, 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 and if they don't, what do they do to make sure the kids are okay? Uh, I think about all the folks that are going to be affected in the next few weeks that are collateral damage, people that are not in any way directly connected to anything. But because we are where we are, they're going to be facing things that only a, only a few days ago they weren't. And so I'm thinking of, of all those folks, and, um, and I want you to be thinking about them too and, and be praying for them. So let's just pause just for a moment. Lord, uh, help us in this time as we consider where we are and as we think about all those right now uh, that are hurting and in need of a touch of your grace, uh, help us to have the faith and be the people of faith you've called us to be. Uh, now, in this hour, and in the hours and days and weeks uh, to come. Lord, we, we pray right now, and we know this is not about fear, but rather us wanting to be part of the solution, uh, wanting us to, uh, uh, to do our, our part, our duty. And so, uh, Lord, that's where we are, and, and help us in those efforts. Help us in the weeks ahead uh, to be the kind of church you want us to be, to be both wise and faithful, uh, to have your peace as well as your courage, to be discerning, and, Lord, to, to act in the power of your Spirit, to be sensitive, to be sensitive to those in our community that are already hurting for reasons not related to this, this, uh, this virus, and especially for those who end, up, who end up being so. And so, Lord, we come now in this place. Help us to have your mind, O Christ, and give us a word from you today. Help us to have peace. We're, we're here listening to this message, seeking you. Lord, give us a word that we need to hear. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so if we look in the, the, to the Psalms, uh, we look at the 46th Psalm, and we read just a few of these verses. I think you'll find this uh, a blessing and an encouragement. Uh, on, in the 46th Psalm, we read verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble. And then verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Again, I'm so grateful that uh, you've turned... uh, 
turn to the church online this morning. You've, you've turned and, and tuned in. And, uh, you know, what a week we've had. Uh, uh, at the beginning of this week, uh, our staff was gathered on Tuesday morning, and we were discussing how we need to take the appropriate uh, precautions to have worship this week. We knew we had to continue to step it up when we had to communicate those steps to folks. Uh, we even discussed, I even brought it up in our staff meeting, that the likelihood of us having to uh, cancel worship at some point in time in the future, or at least for there to be a call for that, uh, would be would more likely be coming. And, and, and so we even talked about that on Tuesday. But none of us thought that we would be facing that reality this Sunday. Uh, but a lot changed. A lot changed in 30 to 36 hours. You might remember uh, starting then on that Tuesday evening uh, and then well into Wednesday, uh, you know, the, the NBA started canceling games uh, and, 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 and pushing off their season. They, uh, the NCAA uh, canceled, first canceled a couple of games, sent folks home, and then they announced, you know what, they're canceling March Madness this year. There's not going to be an NCAA tournament. I mean, just how shocking was that? So many of us thought, oh, wow, this is really really serious. And, and then there's other sports that have been canceled. Uh, there's uh, soccer, uh, uh, professional soccer has been canceled. And um, uh, the NASCAR race uh, next couple weeks uh, has been delayed. MLB, the Major League Baseball season has been delayed. Uh, all of the Broadway, all the theaters have closed and, and, and are pushing things. Disneyland uh, told us this week uh, that they are closed uh, for a certain amount of time. And so, oh my goodness, uh, things got incredibly serious incredibly quickly and um, incredibly fast. And, and then, you, you know, in the midst of all this, there was the economic downturn. Uh, you know, the stock market lost over 4,000 points this week, uh, erasing five years of gains. Uh, many of us uh, were concerned about that. Uh, I actually uh, talked to my financial advisor this week, but, but not directly because of that. Actually, we had a different question. And, and I loved his attitude when I called him. I said, how are you doing? He said, it's great. Things are great. What a great time to invest. You know, go ahead and invest. This is a great time to buy. And, and I appreciated his attitude as, as we talked. Uh, but, you know, for a lot of folks... Uh, you know, we see this sort of thing, and we have memories from 2008. I, I know I do. Uh, that was a, a time in my life where, in pastoring a brand new church, we were we were starting our very first kind of capital campaign to to raise the the funds needed to to move it from the school we were in to our our first building, and uh, and and all that happened. Oh my gosh! And it's so easy for us today, when, when in the midst of such sudden changes and such drastic measures. Uh, that we, we, you know, tend to clam up. We begin to, to switch uh, from that front part of our mind that's the thinking part that is, engages on our spirituality and engages in our maturity and conversation. And as I've shared with you before, right, we, we go to the back part of our brains, that fight or flight. Uh, and as uh, I've recently learned by our own security ministry here, there's also a third, uh, and that's not just fight or flight, but freeze, you know, and uh, Gosh, that's, you know, and, and we can do all those things. We can ignore what's happening. We can pretend it doesn't exist. We can panic and, and go out and buy all the toilet paper we can find, if we can find any at all. I have no idea what the toilet paper has to, anything to do uh, with this virus. That just is bizarre. But people do bizarre things uh, when we're in that fight or flight or freeze kind of mode, which is not to say that this shouldn't be taken seriously because it should. But what's the right balance? You know, what do we, where do we need to go? Uh, you know, often our, our sense is to, uh, you know, when, when this comes at us, to imagine the worst case scenario. Uh, I, I know that's a tendency that, that I can have. A couple weeks ago, I shared with you at the beginning of the Lent that, uh, you know, one of the things we can get rid of this year or one of the things to give up for Lent is worry. And we had a whole message about that. And, and, and part of that is how you know, some, it, the reason that worry is, is such a difficult thing because bad things really do happen. And, and then in our, in our taking in of that information, we often begin to imagine, or, or, or some of us anyway, can very quickly imagine the worst case scenario. And, and we react to that. And, and we have to push back and, and we have to say, no, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. Rarely does the worst case scenario happen. Rarely. Now, that doesn't mean I don't take it seriously. That doesn't mean that I don't plan and prepare and think through, uh, but, it, but I'm, I'm not going to panic. I'm going to have the peace of God, and I'm going to move with prudence forward. 
in faith of God and in, with the wisdom of God. I tell you, on Friday night, <clears throat> uh, after we had come to the decision earlier that day that we were going to cancel services, and I, I mean the 30 hours prior to that was, was um, I don't want to say maddening, but it, it, the, the information that was coming in was, was coming in so quickly, and I, I was thinking about my family, I, I was thinking about my loved ones, um, uh, my mother, my father, who might be particularly susceptible to uh, uh, the virus and um, the uh, uh, coronavirus. And, and then I was thinking about this church um, and what's the best decision for us here and, and how best to pastor and shepherd this congregation in this moment and in the immediate next weeks. And, and not just in light of, you know, COVID-19, but, but, but in light of all that we have going on and how this might affect our various missions and ministries and some of the plans. And, you know, it can be overwhelming. And, you know, that whatever your situation is, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you can, you can relate. I, I was um, that evening on Friday night, and I, I tell you what, I, I, my eyes were burning. Uh, I didn't feel well. Um, you know, I, I, and I, I immediately, of course, what do you, right? What do you think? I'm thinking, I have it. I've got it. Oh no, I'm, I'm infected, right? Because that's, that's, that's what we do. And, uh, but you know what? I, I had some soup. I lay down, got some rest. I felt better, um, and got a good night's sleep. Uh, the first, uh, really good night's sleep I think I've had in a, in a couple nights. And I feel pretty day. I feel pretty good today. Um, it's so easy for us to internalize these things. And, and then, you know what, when we, have, when we move out of that and, and we realize that uh, we've kind of panicked ourselves or, or whatever, sometimes we can go the opposite direction. We can, re- we can respond to how we first responded, or, or maybe this is our initial response, and that's anger, or uh, we, we, we say, why are they doing all this? You know, why, why, why is all this happening? This is just people just overreacting everywhere. And, and yeah, there is absolutely some overreaction. There's no doubt about it. There's definitely people panicking. But I, I thought I would just share with you just briefly why, why some of these practical steps are being, are being taken. And uh, before I do that, I want to let you know that I'm, I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, everybody watching this should already know that. Uh, you know, I'm not a, a health professional. Uh, I'm not a, 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 an official government leader with this information. I've just uh, researched, just like you can, WHO website, the CDC. Um, and, and so take all that in mind. This is for the purpose of a sermon to help you. Uh, but you, of course, need to do your own research. Nonetheless, I just thought I'd share with you that part of what's happening here is that uh, the realization that, that 80% of the folks that might get infected by uh, the coronavirus is um, uh, more likely don't have any real effects, uh, that they, they may not feel bad at all. And, and so that's been a, a real concern by our health professionals and how this, this virus could spread with, with so many folks that are particularly infected and yet not have any effects or, or don't, maybe they, maybe they feel mildly irritated or, or whatever. Uh, and so there's a, been a real concern about that. Uh, and how do we prevent that? And, and then, but, but here's the thing. Uh, when they make all the forecasts that they've made, um, about half of us will, will never be infected. Uh, with this with this virus, and about the forty percent of the population that they're thinking may may at some point become infected, uh, are going to have very mild symptoms and may not even know it. It's that other ten percent, the ten percent of folks that contract this, and they do have bad effects. That's we're concerned about them, and we're especially concerned about those with other kinds of health conditions that might lead to that next statistic which is that 0.1 or 0.3% uh, that could lead to mortality. Um, and so, you know, that's... Th- th- now, what are those numbers? Well, it's like one in 1,000 people or three in 1,000 people. Uh, it's, it's literally 99.9% of, every, you know, of everybody's going to be fine or 99.7% of everybody's going to be fine. But the thing is... You know, when it's your loved one that's that 0.1% or that 0.3%, it 
you know, or, and, and we're talking about in the population, that's, those, those are still really large numbers. That would be like well over 300,000 people on the one side, the one end, or, or nearly a million people to the other. And, and so when you, you know, that would be facing death. And, and so when you start talking like this, on the one hand, it's, you recognize that your chances of contracting this uh, virus and, and it leading to um, the worst possible scenario is, is fairly low. But then at the same time, to deal with the reality that this is still serious and we want to prevent these deaths from happening. And so that's why the officials uh, started calling for things to be canceled. That's why the schools are canceled. And ultimately, that's why churches started saying we need to have only online worship, uh, at least for right now, so that, that we can mitigate, we can stop and bring those numbers down to hopefully something much, much smaller. And, and so that's, that's the goal. Now, <clears throat> what does that mean for you and me? Well, <laughs> it means a disruption of life. <laughs> but we as spiritual people are not, are not uh, we're not strangers to this. If you look in the Bible, uh, there, there's numerous references. There has to be over 50 references to uh, people that are driven away or have to deal with a pestilence of some kind. But more than that, more, I think even a better illustration, especially that we're living now in a time of a, a Christian season of Lent, is this idea of wilderness. You know, um, every year when we start the season of Lent, we talk about how Jesus went into the, wilder, the wilderness for 40 days. And he was there alone in the wilderness. He was isolated. And, and I thought about that. I thought about that as, as you know, as we are isolated from one another, as we're isolated from the normal routines of life. And it's the spiritual season of Lent. What if, what if during this time we began to think about this in those terms, in our own wilderness, where we're, we're out, it, not only in the spiritual season, but, but somewhat physically in a time of wilderness, a time of isolation, at least to our immediate families. And what that might mean for us what, what, how God might use that for us. You know, there's some things for us to consider uh, in a time of, of wilderness or a time of, of, of isolation that certainly gives us more time to, to study God's written word, to memorize God's written word. I, I bet there's been plenty of times in your life where you thought, you know, if I only had more time, if I only had, well, now you have more time, or many of us do uh, have more time uh, to to read God's Word, to study, to reflect upon it, to catch up. If you've not done our devotions, if you've not uh, read Mark, now's your chance to get involved. Or, or, or in addition, I really don't say or, but actually in addition to that, maybe there's some Christian books, some, some spiritual books that you have been wanting to read, and, and now's the time. You're going to reflect on that. You're going to take that time. Maybe, maybe because you're isolated in a wilderness period, it's actually a time for you to spend more time in prayer. You know, when we're by ourselves with our own thoughts and our own feelings, it's a good time for us to reflect and share those with God. And one of the things I thought particularly I'd ask you to begin praying about is who you're going to invite this Easter. You know, there's a lot of hurting people right now. And when we come out of this, and we're going to come out of it, we are. You know, they're going to be looking for a place to go. And maybe between now and then we can, you can connect with them and they can watch online. But I'm hoping that you'd begin to pray in this time of wilderness about where God might lead you and direct you, direct you to share your faith, to talk to people about Jesus. You know, so often we think about witness and sharing our faith as like an add-on to our spirituality instead of it being the main thing. And so reflect on that. Pray about it. Who is God leading to you, leading you in your life, your neighbors, your family, your friends, the people you've yet to meet, but you will meet before Easter, that when God lays it on your heart, you're going to talk to them. You're going to share something about faith, about spirituality, about Jesus. You're going to invite them to church and let God handle the results. I want, to, I want you to seriously consider that uh, in the next few days and weeks. All right, another thing that, that you might want to think about when it comes to 
spirituality and this time of wilderness and how you might stay connected or what you might do, and that is giving. Uh, you know, we already received uh, the offering or talked about it in worship uh, earlier, but I, I thought I would just at this point remind you that there was a time that offering was the only act of worship there was. As you read early in the book of Genesis, um, you know, the, the very first few acts of worship for quite a while, as a matter of fact, the only seeming part of it was the offering. And so what if, what if during the next few weeks, your offering became that much more meaningful to you? Before you sent that check in or before you gave online, you would pause and you would really reflect and you would, you would pray about it and pray that God would use it and you would think about what it is that you give and, and how that is a worshipful act and how taking part of what you have and returning it, no strings attached, right? Giving it back to God, how that informs your faith and how that builds you and, and how important it is to, to remember that God owns it all anyhow and, and that by returning a portion of it back to him that, that you're trusting God with that as a symbol that you're trusting God with all of your life. And how important is that right now for us to trust God with all our life and everything that we have? The other things I thought I'd talk to you about giving is, you know, we, we're, we're being told to stay at home as best we can, but obviously we still have to go out here and there and do certain things. And, you know, thinking through where other people are hurting, uh, there might be several places that you go that, are, um, th- that you might tip uh, and it may not even necessarily a restaurant, but but if so, certainly. Uh, but there are other places, and, and you know, I'm wondering if right now we give even larger tips than normal, recognizing that fewer people are out and about, fewer people are doing business, and and, and it's often those people that are living on tips that really are going to need it. And so that might be another way. Or, or what about this? What if? You know, you're like me, and you're not really interested right now in going to too many restaurants. Um, but what if you were to go into one of them, and instead of eating, you bought a gift card? You know, because you, you're going to go back. You like that restaurant, and you're going you're gonna to visit that restaurant, um, you know, especially if it's locally owned. And, you, you know, but you're just not going to do it right now. But, you know, right now they, they might need that. And so you're going to go and buy a gift card. So those are some things to think about when it comes to uh, practicing your spirituality while you're in isolation during this time of, of wilderness. Also to remind you to serve. Uh, we can still serve. We're still Christian, you know. Uh, just because we're in the wilderness doesn't mean that we're not spiritual. We're just isolated right now. We're in the wilderness, and it's a chance for us to grow. It's a chance for us to look at our faith differently. And it's uncomfortable sometimes because we're used to a certain routine of coming to worship or going to Wednesday nights. And, and, some, and, and that's wonderful, but sometimes we accidentally allow our faith to be only those things. But we don't have that convenience right now. And so that's a good thing. We're in the wilderness. We're in the time of Lent, and it's a chance for God to use this time in our lives, this, this isolation, this wilderness to grow us in a brand new way. When it comes to serving, I'm wondering if you might serve your own family. You know, is this a time for you to reconnect? Is this a time for you to, to if, you know, maybe you've always wanted to do this anyway and say, you know, no cell phones, no electronics at the table, you know, or, or we're going to deliberately put electronics away for even more time. It, you know, real temptation would be to use them even more right now. Uh, but what if we pushed our, each other to, to reconnect, to share once again, to tell those stories, to share our faith, even with our own family? It's been amazing to me as a pastor for 24 years how unfortunately common it is that I have discovered husbands and wives that don't talk to each other about their faith. And, and so what an opportunity it is for us to serve our families by just sharing, getting to know one another again. You can, you can, start, you can start there. It, it's amazing how love is rekindled in almost any relationship when more time is spent listening. And then when it comes to people who are sick, and first of all, you know, those of us that are more vulnerable, I, I want you to be very, very cautious about this. But those of us that maybe are not quite as vulnerable as others who might, when the time comes for us to reach out to neighbors who perhaps might be ill, uh, one of the things that's been recommended is, and it's something the church has always been good about, and that is sick people need to eat. And, and so I know uh, some of you want to cook or, or you'll be able to cook. And, 
And what they're suggesting is that, you know, when that time comes, we cook meals, whatever, and, and if we can, we leave it at the door for them. We tell them we're dropping it off. They come pick it up. If you have to go inside, they're saying, you know, try to wear a mask. They're even saying wear goggles. And, of course, you know, wash your hands uh, after you... Uh, after you, after you leave, immediately after leaving. So those are some things to, to think about and keep in mind. Certainly, we're going to have some opportunities right here in our church for those, again, that are not nearly, that aren't the vulnerable folks, that are the least susceptible or least vulnerable to the, the worst effects of uh, the coronavirus. We're going, to have, we're going to offer some opportunities for you folks in the next week or two weeks to serve our community. You'll just have to stay tuned, uh, and we'll get that information out to you uh, as soon as we can. All right. Well, as I finish up here, I just want to say this. Growth, spiritual or otherwise, is not immediate. I mean, there's always miracles, and there's always surges, and there's always wonderful moments and mountaintop experiences. But most growth takes time, and that's really hard for us. We want immediate success, immediate results. Part of the reason that You know, we struggle with something as simple as losing weight or getting out of debt is it takes so much time. We can't do it in a day. We can't do it in a week. We can't even do it in a month. This time of isolation and wilderness is going to make us face up to those sorts of things. Spirituality, maturity, growing our faith is not only learning that it takes time, but embracing it. I'm going to invite you to take this, this time, this season that we're in as a country, as a nation, to take it seriously. This is serious. But also to take it with a bias of hope. That we have a God that will not let what is wrong, what is evil, or even something like sickness have the last word. God will bring good things out of it, and me and you can be part of those good things. We can be it publicly in our community, and in our own personal lives. God can bring good out of this if we let him. And so I'm going to invite you to have a bias of hope, taking this very seriously with wisdom, discernment, but also with hope, leaning into it, embracing the fact that it's going to be different for a while. It may even be very difficult. But nonetheless, we are not a people without hope. We have God. And, and with that, I, I want to I close with this last thought. You know, we're in the book of Mark, the gospel according to Mark. And, you know, you can read in Mark how Jesus was driven or thrown into the wilderness by the Spirit. If we could, though, I want to kind of turn to Luke real quick. Because Luke says the same thing, but a little differently. In the Gospel of Luke, we read that Jesus was full of the Spirit and led of the Spirit into the wilderness, isolation by himself. And there he is tempted. He is tempted by the devil. He is hungry. According to Luke, by the end of it, he is in need of ministry. His physical form is in need of help, is in need of service, is in need of aid. It was a tough journey for Jesus. But I love it in verse 14 of chapter 4 in Luke. I love this. And we read, And Jesus returned from the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. I want that for you. I want that for this church. I want that for our community. It's a wilderness time. It's a time of isolation. It's a time of strangeness and difficulty and maybe for some sickness as well. But God is with us. May we be filled with hope as we face it with discernment and prudence and courage. And may we come through this. This time of not only spiritual lent and isolation, but somewhat physical. May we come through it and find we are filled with the power of the Spirit. Oh, what an Easter this year could be. Hey, thanks for joining us. I believe we have a little bit more to do. I'm glad you're here. I look forward to seeing you in the future. I love you, praying for you. You pray for me and pray for each other. Thanks. God's peace.
to heal the sin sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Hey, Ringgold United Methodist Church, it's Bobby here with a special edition of this week's Connections. This week we are unable to meet in person, and as I know that I've heard from many of you, you miss your church family. I know that in this unique time, we've got some unique opportunities and some special challenges. We want to give you some ways that you can stay connected to Ringgold United Methodist Church this week. First, keep funding the mission and ministry of Ringgold United Methodist Church by giving. You can either give online or mail your check in through the mail. If you're not already connected with us on social media and online, take a moment right now and get connected with us on Facebook or Instagram or visit us online at ringgoldumc.org. During this time, we will be releasing information through these digital means as a way to keep you updated with what's going on in the life and ministry of Ringgold United Methodist Church. As we become aware of unique ways for us to serve as a church, we will get that information out to you through these channels. As you are physically able and as you feel comfortable to serve, we want to invite you to serve in different kinds of ways over the next couple of weeks. We want to encourage you to pray for our church, pray for our community and our state, our nation, and for the world. Don't underestimate the power of prayer in this time. Secondly, there may be ways for you to serve in person. As we become aware of those opportunities, we'll let you know about those things and encourage you to sign up or let us know if you are able to serve. Even though we cannot meet in person, let's stay connected online and through prayer. 
Let's continue to do this as a church and keep being the church, even in these unusual and sometimes difficult times. Our prayer as a church for you is that you would continue to follow God and be blessed by God as you're empowered by the Holy Spirit to follow Jesus wherever he would lead you and however he would lead you to serve as a disciple in this time. May God bless you.